So welcome everybody um, to our meeting tonight to talk about the Holly Pressure Zone Improvements Project. My name is Catherine Horn and I am a Community Affairs Representative for East Bay Mud. Um, tonight, um, we're going to be starting off with some opening comments by our director um, of Ward 2, John Coleman. And then he's going to pass it over to Kevin Smith, who's going to give you a sort of overview of the project. Um, Jose Rios is going to talk a little bit um, about um, another element of the project. And then afterward, we're going to end with some uh, discussion and, and question and comments. So um, again, um, we are recording this tonight. So if you are interested in, in watching this again, please feel free to reach out to me and I can send you the recording. So with that, Director Coleman, would you like to open it up? Great. Thank you very much, Catherine. My name is John Coleman, and I'm your director uh, representing Ward 2. And uh, the ward is pretty much covers from Walnut Creek, Lafayette, Pleasant Hill, uh, Walnut Creek, all the way down to San Ramon Valley. And we're going to talk about the Holly Pressure Zone Improvement Project. And um, I'm going to make my opening comments. I'm actually driving. I pulled off to the side of the road to be safe to make my comments. Then I will uh, pull back onto the road so I can listen to the presentation and any comments that you may have. Actually, today is actually historical in many ways. This is our 99th birthday at East Bay Mud, and it's important always to look back to the future, back to the past, I'm sorry, but it's as important to look forward to what we need to plan for, and that's exactly what this project is all about. Um, the Castle Crest Road and Sydney Drive area where this work is going to be worked on a very old system, uh, has a redwood tank, which is very unusual in our area, has outdated pumps, hydro uh, pressure zone vessels are from the 1960s, which reduces the fire flow capacity, which is so important as we're heading into summer with um, potential for fires in our region and uh, the high volume and the, high, and the impact it could have. And um, actually, the older the system goes or gets, it becomes more expensive for us to maintain the system. The project will be in three phases, and when it's all completed, the road will be restored just like new. The project manager, Kevin Smith, will go into more detail and an overview and, an and answer any questions. I'm again going to listen in, and I want to thank you for participating tonight. And if you need to get a hold of me, my cell phone is 510 590 0238. My email is john.coleman at ebmud.com. And again, thank you very much for your involvement tonight and allowing me to listen in. Catherine, oh, I guess I'll hand it off to Kevin now. Thank you. Thank you, Director Coleman. That was a good intro and I think you hit the nail on the head. What we're talking about doing with this project is replacing aging, outdated infrastructure with modern infrastructure. So I'm going to share my screen and Catherine, if you let me know if um, if you see the title screen start sharing, and then I'll get started. Yep, you're good to go. Great. So my name is Kevin Smith. I'm an associate civil engineer in the design division here at East Bay Mud. I'm a project manager for a number of capital improvement projects. And what I'd like to talk to you today about is the Holly Pressure Zone improvements. So I have an agenda here on screen. First, I'm going to give you an overview of the project, talk about the location, uh, and then dive into the project drivers. Why are we doing this? And talk for a little bit about the project benefits. Then we could get a little more into detail on the scope of work, and then talk about the project schedule. And then at the end of the meeting, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. So to start with, let's see where we are in the world. Um, on your screen, we have a map showing the Castle Crest and Sydney Drive neighborhood. Um, it's shown as west of I-680, and this is the location of the Crest and Hill Mutual pressure zones. I'm going to call out the circle at the top of the screen here. That's a, a pumping plant that pushes water up to the Redwood tank that Director Coleman had mentioned. This is the focus area of this project. And what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about what the current facilities, the state of the current facilities, talk about the challenges we have with them, and then talk about the improvement project in detail. So to start with, the Crest and Hill Mutual pressure zones have four facilities. 
the first of which is the Crest pumping plant. On your screen, you see a few images of the Crest pumping plant. Um, this was built in the 1960s and the pumps were replaced in the 1980s. I wanna point out that what you see on the screen there is a very small pumping plant. Uh, it has outdated electrical gear. Uh, we have corrosion issues in the vault. There's a lack of drainage in the vault. And um, most challenging on the bottom left of your screen there, we see the discharge pipeline. So that's the pipeline coming from the pumping plant going up the hill. It's exposed, it's above ground. And you can see that in that area that the ground has actually fallen away from the hillside. When I look at this, I see a, several different points of failure um, that could compromise the distribution system up in the Castle Crest and Sydney Drive area. One other thing to note is that there is no power backup at Crest Pumping Plant. So in the case of a power, fa power failure, or in the event PG&E chooses to do a PSPS power outage, um, the pumping plant stops working and we have no ability to push water up the hill. From Crest Pumping Plant, water gets pushed into the Crest Reservoir. This is what Director Coleman was talking about, an old redwood tank. It was built in 1961. This facility was not built by East Bay Mud. It was actually built by the predecessor water distributor in the area. Um, and when we expanded our service area, we assumed um, this facility. It was built in the 60s and redwood tanks um, were very more common back then, but this is not something that we would build today. It's uh, far outlived its useful life cycle. Um, you see some pictures there on the top right. There's some wood rot on the actual reservoir. Uh, the reservoir has some leakage issues. It is not seismically anchored to the foundation. In addition, there's pipe corrosion and uh, some safety issues. We have no way to access um, the roof if for maintenance or for uh, monthly checks. And this is the type of facility that we would not build today. Um, and, and really, I want to drive home that message. Every, all the facilities you're seeing on your screen right now are old and outdated, uh, 60, 50 years old, things that would not stand up to the current code, engineering codes that we have in place. From the Crest Reservoir, uh, which is located on Sydney Drive, there's a very small pumping plant. It's called the Hill Mutual Pumping Plant. It's located on the Crest Reservoir site and it pushes water into the Hill Mutual pressure tank. This is what Director Coleman had identified as a hydro pneumatic tank. Um, this is also an outdated system. Uh, the, the pumps themselves were installed in the 1970s. Um, you know, that's roughly 50 years old. In general, we think a pump has a life cycle of about 25 years. So it's definitely time to replace the Hill Mutual pumping plant. Also, the electrical gear is outdated and poses some hazards. Um, we don't have safety clearances for our electricians to work in there. Uh, and that's something we definitely think about um, at East Bay Mud, the safety of our own workers. Um, the pressure tank itself is a way to provide adequate pressure to the neighborhood. So you might notice that the Crest Reservoir is located at the same elevation as some of the homes in the area. Um, so that water gets pumped into the pressure tank where there's a higher pressure um, to then push into the distribution system into your homes. There's some issues with this system. Uh, we don't install these anymore. In fact, we're systematically trying to remove them from our distribution system. The pressure tank itself does not hold enough capacity. Uh, there's about 2,000 gallons of water capacity in the pressure tank. Um, and it's part of that pumping plant system where the electrical motors uh, need to be replaced. This is an outdated system that we want to get rid of. So that is the current state of things in the Crest and Hill Mutual pressure zones. As we walk through each of the facilities, I talked a bit about the challenges with each, but uh, what I want to convey is that there's four facilities we're talking about. And if there's a failure in any one location in any of those facilities, we have reduced water service to your pressure zone. So it's definitely time for a life cycle replacement. Um, on your screen here, I've listed a few of the challenges. And really, the one I want to hammer home is this limited capacity for fire flows. That pressure vessel holds about 2,000 gallons. If you were to open a hydrant on your block, the pressure vessel would empty very quickly in the matter of minutes. 
Um, this is because it's an old outdated system. We want to improve that. Um, another issue is uh, power outages. If there's no power to power these pumps, um, that hydrogen pneumatic tank can't get refilled from Crest Reservoir or Crest Reservoir cannot be refilled from Crest Pumping Plant. So the project we're intending on doing will resolve all those issues. Uh, a few of the other challenges up there on your screen, I've mentioned already the wood rot, um, the fact that all the pumps need to be replaced, there's safety and access issues for East Bay MUD staff. Basically this whole system of facilities has exceeded its useful life cycle. So we're embarking on the Holly Pressure Zone Improvements Project. And I wanna highlight the benefits before going into detail on each of the components. First, you're, you're gonna see a very tangible benefit of improved water pressure. We're gonna be pulling water from a higher pressure zone. So from a, a reservoir that's located higher in elevation. So you shouldn't have any other, any um, water pressure issues in your home anymore. You'll see that from day one. Now, the other benefit, which I think is really the most important one, is greater reliability and resiliency. Your water system will be fed from the Holly Reservoir. That's located to the south. Holly Reservoir is a 2 million gallon tank. Now, just as a point of comparison, the pressure vessel, uh, the pressure tank that we had just talked about, the Hill Mutual pressure tank, holds about 2,000 gallons. Holly Reservoir holds 2 million gallons. So if you open up a, a hydrant on your block after this project is in place, it's not going to run dry. It won't dry. It won't run dry after minutes. It won't run dry after extended use. Another major benefit is that your water will be served via gravity from the Holly Reservoir. So there's no pressure vessel. There's no pumps required to push water into a pressure vessel. Um, if there's an electrical outage or a PSPS event where PG&E has to cut the power, Holly Reservoir has two million gallons of water to feed into your area. What this results in is improved fire flows. And I, when I say improved fire flows, it's really two elements. The amount of water we have and the fact that we can still serve that water in power outages. Um, so the improved reliability during power outages. So this to me is a, the biggest project benefit that you're gonna see, improved reliability and resiliency. This is how we build our systems now. Um, and let me go into detail on each of the project components. So this is the map I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. And we have shown here the Crest and Hill Mutual facilities. But at the bottom of your screen is a call out for Holly Reservoir. So this is that 2 million gallon uh, reservoir to the south. That line in blue represents existing pipelines in the ground. So that's already there. What we wanna do is build about 5,000 feet of new pipeline. That includes a pipeline to get from the end of the Holly Reservoir existing pipeline over into the Castle Crest neighborhood. And once we're in the Castle Crest neighborhood, we'll build a pipeline on Castle Crest as well as Sydney. Once that pipeline's in the ground, we're gonna rezone 55 customers to connect to that new pipeline. You know, one of the critical issues we face as a water provider is that we must maintain service at all times. Um, so we leave the existing system in place, the existing pipeline in the ground, and we're going to build a new pipeline on Castle Crest and Sydney Drive. Um, and what that'll allow us to do is update your old 1960s pipeline with modern, um, modern materials, um, and then uh, have basically uninterrupted water service. Now you might have a couple hours of outage as these services get switched over, but uh, your homes we've put onto this uh, new pipeline connected to the Holly Reservoir. Once we have everything up and running and we are sure that your homes are uh, getting good water service, the next step is to demolish the old facilities. So we will have a separate project to uh, demolish the Crest Reservoir, the Crest Pumping Plant, the Hill Mutual pumping plant and the Hill Mutual pressure tank. And at the end of that project, we're gonna do final road restoration. Uh, we know the neighborhood has had a recently improved roadway um, and it's our commitment to leave it in as good a condition as it is now after all our improvements are completed. 
So I want to talk for a second about the detailed scope of work um, actually on Crest Road and Sydney Drive. Uh, you'll see East Bay mud crews installing ductile iron pipe in this area. We have about 2,700 feet of eight inch pipe and about 400 feet of six, six inch pipe that'll be on Sydney Drive. This will include rezoning 55 services and um, hooking uh, five, higher, fire, five fire hydrants up to the new pipeline. Now, to talk about the customer rezoning, we have Jose Rios on the call. Um, Jose, would you mind speaking about that for a little bit? Thank you, Kevin. Can you hear me? We do. Okay. Excellent. Are you on the next slide? Uh, let me click over there for you. There we go. Thanks, Kevin. So, uh, and as part of these improvements, we're gonna be increasing the water pressure. And before we could do that, um, we need to install pressure reducers uh, in conformance with the California Plumbing Code. Uh, anytime the pressure exceeds 80 PSI, pressure reducers are required. And so we will be installing these pressure reducers at each of the individual homes to protect your water lines and appliances. So all this will be done at East Bay Mud Expanse. We've already sent out letters to each of the uh, 55 homeowners and our property owners. And so we're, we're the only, at this point, we only request that you return the signed uh, letters, uh, acknowledging your consent for us to do the work at our expense on your property. And then we'll be in contact with, uh, with you and our plumber to get that work uh, scheduled and coordinated with the pipeline work. Um, these pressure reducers are required because we're gonna increase the pressure approximately about 40 PSI from the Holly pressure zone. And uh, as a result, you know, the water pressure will range for along the, uh, this neighborhood from about 80 to 100 PSI. Currently it's about 40 to about 80 today um, along Castle Crest and Sydney Way. Next slide. So what is the pre-RV? Well, PRV is what you see in the picture here. It's essentially a standard house regulator that you see. Uh, some of you may already have some of these if your pressure is over 80 PSI. And it, what it does is it helps to regulate or reduce the water pressure uh, for house line uh, appliances and irrigation lines as well to protect the, uh, them from, from, uh, from uh, failure or um, for due to excessive water pressure, that kind of thing. Uh, we typically spec uh, the model Wilkins 600 XL, which is a lead-free bronze body and bell housing. And uh, it allows us to reduce the, the pressure anywhere by uh, setting it between 50 and 75 PSI. We typically set it around 70 to 75, so you can see a measurable difference on the uh, pressure at the end of the day. But you have the authority to adjust and set it as you please. Uh, typically, these are installed uh, just where the shutoff is at, to your home uh, go, and uh, between the, uh, the hose bib and the shaft valve. And uh, as part of uh, some of you I met today, we have went out there with a plumber to try to locate where those best locations would be. And so we will coordinate that work with the plumber and uh, your, yourselves. Next slide. So as I mentioned, we've already uh, notified you. You should have received letters. Uh, to the in the slide here is a, is an example of where we'd like you to return it. Um, and then once we get your agreement, we can then proceed with uh, scheduling the work. These people will hire a plumber, and we will uh, notify you who we selected uh, prior to the work being getting. And then once we uh, you've been notified, you should be hearing from us thereafter, sometime uh, during the the construction of the pipeline, it will be coordinating these installations. And so the plumber will be responsible for contacting you. We'll provide them with your contact information. If uh, your contact information is outdated, please uh, feel free. Well, well, we'll follow up to find out uh, if there's additional information we can we need from you. But generally, we should be able to contact you with the information we have from our customer records. And then the plumber will uh, finish that work. And after the water pressure is increased, they will come back to adjust the PRVs a second time just to make sure that they're uh, set at the proper pressure reading. And in, and in addition to that, 
if we find any leaks or any work that needs to be done, we will we'll fix those leaks, no questions asked. And then finally, in our letter, as we as pointed out here in the last bullet, uh, we will warranty that work for 12 months. After that period of time, you know, it is uh, uh, standard PRVs will become your responsibility. Typically, there's very little maintenance on them. Uh, uh, they range in 15 to 20 years of lifespan, and, uh, and uh, they really aren't really a problem once they're installed. They're pretty standard for, for new home installations. Next slide, please. And here's just a, a, some examples of what they look like and some uh, where we have to retrofit existing plumbing. You can see the copper pipe. You can see uh, the regulator itself, the pressure reducer that is. And then uh, if need be, we also put them in crawl spaces or in boxes uh, below grade if we don't have any room. So the, the installation will be dictated by the, your particular home plumbing. And so in some cases, we'll also even put in new shutoff valves so that it's easier for you to operate and close the valve instead of that or a meter box. So with that, I'll turn it back to Kevin. The only thing I want to point out is that I'll be your point of contact uh, along with my project manager, Sanal Briscoe, who is also on this line. And uh, my number is uh, uh, area code 510 287 1091. I'll be your point of contact uh, separate from the pipeline work, but uh, feel free to reach out to me as well. Thanks, Jose. So to close out, let's talk about project schedule. I have a couple different activities listed here. The first one is not directly in the Castle Crest and Sydney Drive area. This is uh, the first line item is to build the pipeline to get into the Castle Crest neighborhood. East Bay Mud intends to start work in August on that work. It should last about one to two months. And then starting in September, you'll see East Bay Mud pipeline crews on Castle Crest and Sydney Drive. Um, Pipeline installation will take roughly one to two months. Um, and in parallel, the customer rezoning work will also take place. Now, the demolition of the facilities that I spoke about, that will happen about a year later. So we're targeting summer 2023 to do the demolition of those facilities. And then the final road restoration, which is, um, we're working out details with Contra Costa County on that, but it'll likely be a slurry seal to leave everything uh, very nice looking at the end of the job. Uh, we will tackle that after the demolition project is complete so that we won't uh, you know, have any damage on the roadway uh, with some heavy equipment um, for the demolition. One thing to note, uh, we may have, you might see some activity out there in the coming weeks. Uh, we might be doing some potholing, which helps us identify the location of ut utilities. I believe that work is gonna start in the next week or so. So with that, I'd like to open it up to questions. Um, on your screen, you see the contact email for uh, following up with East Bay Mud with any questions you may have. Hi, can you hear me? Thanks. Yes. Um, yeah, great presentation, guys. Appreciate the, uh, the heads up of what's coming. This is uh, Brian Granger. Uh, a couple of questions for you. Um, the, uh, I'm familiar with a large tank between us um, here on Castle Crest in Sydney and Rossmore, a very large steel tank. My memory is that is actually a lower elevation of where we're at. So I assume that the only reservoir you mentioned is not that tank right between us and, and Castle Crest, but probably someplace or between us and Rossmore, but someplace that must be higher. Is there another tank on here that you're not showing on the map that the president is in? That's correct. So if I understand correctly, you're talking about a, a tank that's near Gray Eagle Drive in Rossmore. It's located uh, much closer to Castle Crest Road than Holly Reservoir. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so you hit the nail on the head. Uh, that one is lower elevation. It would be impossible to serve the Castle Crest neighborhood from that reservoir. Um, that one is called Castle Hill Reservoir. Um, and in the future, uh, we're going to do a demolition project on that it has an old wood roof um, and the infrastructure uh, will be uh, demolished. So Holly Reservoir is located much higher in elevation. 
um, and is a larger tank able to serve the Castle Crest neighborhood. So you're correct. The one off Gray Eagle Court is not what we're talking about. Thanks, Joe. Uh, second question has to do with the uh, what's going to happen after the demolition of the properties. I live pretty close to the uh, mutual that was water tank, and I uh, see so a talk about demolishing this old facility this next summer. Ultimately, what happens to those properties? Lots of something else. So um, it sounds are, are like those, are, they're in with tank after it's demolished. What will happen to that property? Uh, East Bay Mud will retain possession of that property. We have some communication facilities at that location that are uh, critical to relaying signals from other facilities back to our OCC, our operational control center. So we intend on um, keeping that property, maintaining it. Are there plans to add additional features to those properties or just maintain them as they are? Uh, no plans for improvements. Okay. And the third and final question, <laughs> as to, you, you mentioned several times, both you and, uh, and John mentioned the, <coughs> uh, the roadways. Um, we, we paid on Sydney, um, uh, the homeowners on Sydney paid to have our street resurfaced back in uh, September of last year, so eight months ago. Uh, the county did the uh, the castle press and you said several times that it's going to be returned to you know as good as it is now i'm assuming it's not just going to have a patch you know uh, over top of the um, or you've been trenching through the pipeline the roads actually will be fully resurfaced for the curb yes and let me um kind of get into the detail on that a little bit so we're applying for Contra Costa County encroachment permit, they dictate the final restoration requirements. Um, because the road has been recently resurfaced, our requirements will, are higher than normal. What we intend on doing, uh, when the pipeline's being installed, you'll see temporary paving initially. Um, once all the pipeline is in the ground, uh, you're likely to see a uh, what we call a T-cut, where we um, cut a little bit wider than the original trench. Um, and backfill it and uh, restore the asphalt. So you'll get a structural section that actually overlaps the edges of the undisturbed soil. So if this is the trench, we actually take it out a little further um, at the top and that helps engage, it makes it a more strong structural section. Um, after that, at the end of the demolition project, we're gonna slurry seal. And what that leaves you with is no trench cuts um, a nice clean surface that uh, looks as good as new. All right, thank you very much. And sorry, what <laughs> I said, I said that was my last question on board. You don't anticipate, Kevin, any encroachment on any properties? You're not going to be trudging through someone's front yard to uh, over the pipeline? You know, I think um, I'm going to defer to Jose on that because certainly the installation of the PRVs, the pressure reducing valves, will require. Um, contractors to be on your property. Um, but for the pipeline work itself, it's all in the street. It's in the, it's in the right of way. Um, and for the demolition of the facilities, we don't intend on encroaching on any private property. We're going to uh, stick to the streets at our own property. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Jose, I don't know if you want to just talk for a second about the work actually on the property. I, I think you covered it, but um, yeah. Yeah, you covered it, Kevin. There's no um, no encroachment onto the property uh, from the pipeline work itself. Uh, the only other work that might occur is still within the public right of way, and that would be uh, service transfers or service relocations between the water meter and the water main. That's the extent of actual construction, aside from the pressure reducer, which is on private property but we will need permission and do work with in copyright in cooperation with the pro, uh, property owner. Brian, thanks for your question. So, you know, we're, um, I, um, hello, David Ross, 231 Sydney. I'm following up Brian Granger's question and I appreciate hearing what your plans are following the demolition of the tank and pumping station up on Sydney. Um, as the project progresses and we 
head into the new year of 2023, would it be possible for East Bay Mud to let us know and give us an idea of what that property will look like following the removal of that equipment and what it's going to look like with your communications equipment and uh, what we can expect view-wise of the property? Thanks for the question. Um, I would consider this just a removal of the facilities that are currently out there. So the Crest Reservoir will no longer be there. Um, the pressure tank will no longer be there, nor the, um, the cap that's on top of it. I'll flip over to those pictures. And then the pumping plant that you see in the chain link fence all that above ground infrastructure will be removed. Um, there's no plans for improvements. Um, so you're going to notice the absence of things, not the new presence of things, if that makes sense. Sure. But there are antennas and different things like that. And uh, I don't know if that has been upgraded. Uh, currently, there's two antennas on site. Um, and I don't know the final scope if the location is going to change because I believe one might actually be mounted on the Crest Reservoir. Um, so we, I would leave that as a detail we still need to figure out. But um, no it, it won't be any larger than what's currently out there, um, the same style antenna. OK, just keep us surprised. Thanks. And what, sorry, David's question made me think of one more. The uh, the picture you're showing, there's fencing um, and four by four support structure around around the pumping plant. Will the fencing and and uh, tank support structures will not be removed, or is this going to be the equipment and everything else that remains there? Um, the on the left side of your screen, you see chain link fencing around the pumping plant and electrical gear and controls. Um, that fencing is going to be removed um, because there won't be any equipment to protect. Now, the fencing around the property border will likely remain in place um, because we still have equipment there uh, that we need to keep secure. Thank you. Could we get that um, project email again, please? Thank you. Do we have any other questions tonight? <clears throat> Um, if not, you know, if anything ever comes to you, please do feel free to use that email address um, and you can always submit questions and then we can get you an answer via email. Um, and certainly if any of your neighbors um, who were, were not able to attend tonight have any questions, um, you know, encourage them to, to send um, us any, any additional questions as well. Catherine, can you, um, can you send the, the deck? I heard two things at once. I think I heard, can I share the deck? And yes. the answer to that is, of course, yes. I will absolutely share the deck. And um, and I will also share the recording of tonight's meeting too. And I think there was another, uh, I heard another question come in, but I didn't hear that one. Actually, Captain, this is John. I've been listening to the entire presentation and the questions and the comments back. And I'd like to thank Kevin and Jose for, uh, being, for providing all the details for those who've asked the questions, and I don't know how many people are watching or listening in, but for thank you for your participation uh, on this important project in the Walnut Creek area. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your time tonight. Um, thank you for hosting this. We course. appreciate it. Yeah.
So if there are no other questions, um, I'm happy to give you the next 25 minutes back of, of your night. Um, and again, I'll, I'll uh, send out this deck tomorrow along with the uh, YouTube link of the recording. So you can feel free to share it with your neighbors or, or rewatch it and, and do feel free to contact us if you have any additional questions and we'll continue to keep you posted as we move along. And then thank you again tonight. Okay, with that, we'll wrap it up. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night.